All right, well, good evening to everybody. It's good to see uh, so many out of you out here on a rainy night. Um, I have the honor and privilege of serving you for the past eight years, and it really has been a privilege. And I'm so excited, as, as you can probably tell, I don't have an opponent. So I'm really looking forward to the next four years with you and to continue what we've been doing. We've been focusing on our priorities. Um, we've, been, um, we've been working on a lot of great things. We, Expanded Savage Library. We um, yeah, we worked on, on, on transparency in government. As some of you have seen, those of you who follow the county council website, and I know there's at least one of you out there, Stu Cohn, and <laughs> um, who also, and I know there's a number of you. We work really hard because it doesn't matter if you have all the information in the world out there on your website. If you can't find it, it's not of any use. So I want to thank all of you guys. That there's a whole bunch of you in here that I can see right now that actually work were a great help too to us in doing that. Um, I don't know where my time is. Is there a timer somewhere? Oh, there you go. I've got 10 seconds. Well, I'll wait for my questions then, but I'm looking forward to working with you guys for the next four years. Uh, I can announce this one. You're good, you're good. Um, we are, but I'm just going to be loud. Uh, with so many seniors getting older and Social Security not being enough, what are you going to do to assist them in affording how to assist them. Well, we, first of all, we worked on the senior tax credit. That was one of the first things that we did when we got into office. Um, other, how much time do I have for a question? Oh, sorry, 60 seconds. 60 seconds, okay. The other thing that I worked on that I'm particularly proud of was the universal, it was a universal tax credit. We called it the livable homes tax credit because one of the things that we found out was that seniors want to, uh, many seniors would like to, be able to stay in our community. We'd like them to be able to stay in our community, but there are challenges associated by that in terms of mobility which brings me to the other issue, which is I think we really need to work more on transportation. I think that is definitely an area for uh, for us to work on and expand. Absolutely. I think that's actually a great point for our next question then, is follow tagging along with the question I had Senator Fillman, uh, given the additional vehicles and residents in Howard County, what will you do to assist in transportation issues to make sure that we have more than adequate infrastructure? Well, I think everybody involved in this thinks that we need to reconvene APA. I mean, I think the adequate public facilities um, or uh, the ordinance absolutely needs to be updated. It's not, um, it doesn't work with our current lives. And so we need to look at that. We need to add transportation to that is one of the things that we're going to need to look at. We need people to be able to access transportation. We be able to walk to bus stops, for example. Many of you have probably seen bus stops even across the way from here that are hard to access. Um, but that definitely needs to be looked at, and, and we need to look at, when we do that, we need to look at all sorts of infrastructure, including police and fire. Um, and we also need, we know that traffic is a big issue. And one of the problems we have is that you only have one intersection out. And we know that, that any time you have development, it is actually working its way to many more intersections. Than that, so. The next question, uh, actually, I'm going to skip ahead one question, because I think you just touched on a point along those lines is, uh, with respect to redevelopment of infrastructure and improving it, I, you were involved in some of the U.S. One redevelopment efforts. Uh, what more needs to be done to really facilitate U.S. One being a highway of prosperity? Well, w what happened was 10 years ago there was zoning put in place. We worked on zoning, as many of you know, in this past in this past year. And what we wanted to do was see what we could do to encourage the right kind of development to occur along the border. We don't want just residential being thrown out there. We need to have the right kind of development that really complements the community. And one of the areas that I'm most hoping something will happen is just down the road at Whiskey Bottom at Room 1. I mean, that's obviously not something that is helpful to the community the way it is. So we're working on ways to attract those types of businesses there and to encourage that kind of development. Outstanding. Next question is, given uh, substantial school overcrowding, Many schools have resorted to modular trailers for long periods of time. Is this a sufficient response? Why or why not? It's absolutely not a sufficient response. In fact, actually today, I contacted the school system because as many of you know, we had a tornado warning. And I thought of you, Brent, and I said, what's going on with the kids? Are they still, are they in portables? We shouldn't have to have that concern. And I was told, of course, that they were brought in to shelter in place. But that is, that, I think that's absolutely a problem. Thank you. The next question is with respect to the health of the community, the BC specifically about those mentions. Uh, what, what actions do you believe should be taken to help the youth in Howard County avoid that problem? Or fix the BC amongst the... Uh, amongst the youth? Correct. 
gosh, I don't even know where to begin with that. There's so many things that we need to work on with our youth. I mean, I think one of the things we need to do is transportation and walkability. I think we just we just had a conference the other day with a, a national recognized expert, Mark Fenton. For those of you who didn't see it, it seems like not many of you did, but it was really fascinating. We talked about how do we incorporate movement into our daily lives and make it so that, you know, that, that the, the way we build our infrastructure isn't just friendly to cars, it's friendly to movement. And so that if you wanted to get to the store, you could go to the store and you could get physical activity getting to the store and that that was convenient and it would help, frankly, and I think that's something we need to focus on, if we had good transportation because you might be more likely to walk to the store if you had a way back and you need to be able to do that safely. There's a lot of areas around here where it's very difficult to cross. I mean, if you, if you see people crossing Route 1, and that, that horrifies me. So I think that is one of the main things. And the ki kids after school are looking for ways to get places to be active, to get to, to the park here, to get to North Laurel Park, and um, they need to be able to get there. Outstanding. Final question is, the county has certainly improved in transparency, but clearly could do much better. What is the primary goal, or what is the, I think it's what that thing is, what, what is the biggest area that we can improve transparency still in county? And how we achieve that. The biggest area. I think there's a lot of things we need to be the need to be doing. And I've worked over my time on getting information out in terms of pre-submission community meetings. How do you get notice of those? Do you see the sign that's at the end of the at the end of the road? I know Susan, we didn't get quite to that part, but we have done a lot on that. We need to do a lot more. And I think the website's important. But we were only able this year to fix the county council website. That is absolutely something that I'm gonna work with the next county executive on is making all the information on the web accessible. We also just passed a bill to have searchable data available, to have all of our data available and in a searchable format. So I think that's going to be important too. Outstanding. And this is your 32nd opportunity for closing statements. Well, I just really look forward to working with you all again for the next four years. It has really been a pleasure. I love hearing from you. As you know, I, um, I, I work on issues that I see and I see a lot and I'm always out in the community as you know but I also appreciate when you bring those things to my attention so thank you and I look forward to working with you.